Rasta don't come to bow, we come to conquer. A lot of people on social media did not even do any background work on me. They just dismissed me because of my appearance. So maybe, and I did say that in the press conference, maybe you should listen to what I have to say. Maybe you should dig into my background before you decide. Because if you check it, all the people that have been here before know how to dress impeccably. But the country is still frustrating most of us. So maybe what we need is somebody that is not that well dressed, but has better intentions. I have better intentions. Appearance is not everything. Don't judge the book by the cover. I'm a Gambian and I qualify to stand for president just like everybody else that is standing. And before I started, everybody was saying, well, if you're serious about being president, maybe you should consider cutting off your hair. Yeah. Gambia is too conservative, they wouldn't accept the Rastaman. But it's the Rastaman or the dreadlocks that gave me all the attention. Mm -hmm. And the 17 parties are still struggling for <laughs> attention. <laughs> You see, um, there's this saying that science advances one death at a time. So if an existing scientist sits here and creates a, and says that, you know, x equals to y, he will defend that until he dies, even if it's wrong. So if you know that x is not equal to y, x is actually equal to z and you point it out, they will squeeze you, okay? It's the same in politics, it's human nature. People don't like to be wrong. People will defend their wrong, even when right is pointed to them. And that's why I believe in that one-term presidency. It's a way of bringing in fresh ideas all the time. Every five years, you have a new set of people that come and move it. I think part of Africa's problems is because these people have been there for donkey years and they're not trying to leave. They're not trying to leave. If you've been there for more than five years, if you've been there for more than 10 years, you're not working for the Gambia, you're not working for your country, you're not working for Africa, you're working for yourself. Look, if you do the job properly, you shouldn't want to stay there for more than five years because it's not an easy job. I don't know why you would want to carry that load. If they say carry this elephant for 10 years, but after five years, you'll want to put it down. <laughs> but they all don't see it as carrying an elephant. They see it as a way of, you know, chopping the elephant. So that's the problem. If we do it properly, it's a sacrifice you're making for a set of people that you don't want to be. Look, in America, those people go gray straight away. Obama and co, they all went gray. If you're doing your work properly, you shouldn't want to be there and be the only brain in the world. No, two, Africa is like one billion people. Gambia is two million people. You want to tell me I'm the best that Gambia has for the next 50 years? There'll be no space for new ideas because I will think oh, I have the best ideas. Nobody else that has a competing idea should be allowed to see the light of day. No. So my biggest thing is the one-term presidency because when you're in, it's a different thing from when you're out. But so this is why I said I've already written my resignation. I've dated it 2026. You've written your resignation. I've written my resignation. <laughs> so it's not an empty promise. It's a legal document that you can hand in to somebody to hold on to it. Even if I wanted to say, ah, this thing is nice. I like the security and ABC. The resignation is there. Based on the things that I've seen, I support the legalization of cannabis. It takes a government and a national parliament. It's not a president alone that can come and say overnight, weed is legal. It takes a national parliament to discuss it and approve it. I said, as a nation, we should have a conversation because there's an elephant in the room and we are all ignoring it. If you go to any of these big, now our local artists, at least they're filling the stadium. If you go to the stadium for any of those shows, it's only cannabis you will smell. And the police are sitting right there. But because it's 10,000 strong, they cannot do anything. You see what I'm saying? Anybody that wants to smoke here can smoke. Okay, it's only the, it's only the few that get caught that will have to now give some money to be left alone. Okay, the ones that don't, you lock them up for smoking. 
Now you put them in with the criminals and they learn how to do crime proper. You know, those things are wrong. If the UN has decriminalized it and if, if the WHO is saying there might be medical benefits of cannabis, then maybe we should legalize it and start looking into things like that because it's hypocritical to allow alcohol and cigarettes and then say no cannabis. I've never seen anybody being arrested for buying a bottle of beer or drinking it in public. So I'm saying as a nation, we should look into that. It is profitable. People are making billions. Morocco, Uganda, they're making billions from this thing. But I'm saying this is me, Banki, based on what I have seen. I am being honest with myself. As a nation, we are hypocritical. We are like, ah, oh, no, you can't mention that. No, 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 that's a no-go area for me. We are conservative. You know, we are not conservative. We pretend to be conservative. And it's about time we bring the issue on the table and talk about it. Everybody put their own opinion. Let's have the truth for once, instead of what we think or what conservative Gambians think. Appearance is not everything. Don't judge the book by the cover. Rasta don't come to bow. We come to conquer.